So good morning, everyone, and good afternoon to those who are in the afternoon time zone. Um, my name is Angelina. For those who have not met me or if this is your first time here, um, today we are going to go over um, how to start offering physical therapy in your practice, hosted by the one and only Dr. Layton. How are you doing this morning, Doc? Doing amazing. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Um, so without further ado, let's talk about um, how these doctors can start integrating physical therapy in your practice. Take it away, Doc. Um, so I've been practicing 21 years and I've seen things kind of evolve over over time. So when I first started in practice, you know, it was more just straight chiropractic adjust where you do a little bit of physiotherapy. So some stems, some ultrasound, um, but I didn't do much rehab. As, as I've progressed, as I've gone through practice, um, you know, you want to start offering more services to your patients. You want better outcomes uh, and better reimbursement. So physical therapy was a great way to do that. So what's the deal? Giving physical therapy to your patients, uh, providing it for your patients for their treatment, it, it improves patient outcomes. So you're going to get them better. You're going to get them better faster. Um, they're going to get better results. Um, you're going to be seen as their expert. Um, it goes beyond just the adjustment then that you can adjust them and then you can turn around and have them do, you know, pelvic tilts and bridges and stretch their hamstrings and hip flexors. And so you're giving them useful um, exercises to help with their condition and get them better. Um, as you're um, giving them their physical therapy, it's also uh, causing them to be active as opposed to passive. We all struggle with those patients that, um, you know, they expect the, the silver bullet. They wanna come in your office, you adjust them, they feel better, and then they go home and they don't do anything else. And they come back again and you adjust them and they do better and they go home and they don't do anything else. And so those patients that you want to see have lasting reliefs uh, instead of just, you know, the, the passive, passive care. Um, I'd rather work with active patients all the time. Um, it helps differentiate your practice from other practices. Not everybody else is doing it, but it also allows you to offer, you know, physical therapy that you're more comfortable with. Um, there's different ways to approach it. And so you can set your uh, self apart from the other docs in the area. Doing uh, a physical therapy protocol allows you to increase your visits. Um, so the overall number, uh, you're going to get patients there more frequently because if you're telling them you're following more of a physical therapy model, so you need to be here three times a week for a month. Um, patients get that. Uh, and then they understand why and you're explaining to them because there's muscle memory and you need to do your exercises to basically basically create stabilization. Um, patients are going to understand that. Um, it allows you to increase your services offered. So instead of just coming in and getting an adjustment, now all of a sudden you're giving them a couple exercises. Um, if you increase your services offered, you're going to increase your revenue. So your bottom line will benefit. Um, and as you do this long enough, well enough, you're going to start to get referrals. So I have patients that will come from their doctor and they've got a script for PT for like an ankle rehab, knee rehab, uh, knee rehab, shoulder rehab, um, low back and neck rehab. Um, people that are in car accidents, they're sent to you and they're doing them. So um, the more you do it, the better you are at it, the more people you're going to see coming through your door. For it. So where do you begin? Um, so for the docs out there that aren't doing any PT in their office, um, it doesn't have to be an expensive uh, transition to be able to bring it into your office. You, you can do it with tissues in a wall, having them doing a standing pelvic tilt up against the wall. They can do a pelvic tilt on the table. You can teach them how to stretch their hamstrings, uh, their hip flexors. That doesn't require any equipment for anything like that. You're just literally having them do it um, right there in the office. Um, it doesn't take up space when you're doing it that way. Um, so the different, different codes we can fill out, uh, Therax, so that's 97110, manual therapy, 97140. Group therapy, 97150, therapeutic uh, activities, those typically uh, reimburse the best. That's 97530. Self-care home management training, 97535, and then the neuromuscular rehab, 97113. What do all those codes mean? Uh, they're, they're codes that are built out of 15-minute increments. So you capture your first code at the eight-minute mark. Um, so from eight minutes to 22 minutes, you can build one unit. From 23 to 37, you're billing two, and so on. Um, so the most common one that we use is, is Therax, so the 97110. So there's the definition by um, kind of like the letter of the law. That's 
when you're when you're trying to figure out what exercise you want to give and where does it fall into in the categories of uh, the billing scheme, um, anything to develop strength, endurance, range of motion, and flexibility. So if you're having a patient do uh, foam roll work, so they're improving the range of motion, their flexibility, um, that falls under 97110. If you're doing things like hamstring stretch, glutes piriformis stretch, stretching your traps, that falls under all those exercises. If you're having them do anything with dumbbells, you're developing strength. Um, so anything that they do for core, that's strength. That's all 97110. Neuromuscular re-ed. Um, so uh, re-education and movement, balance, coordination, kinesthetic sense, posture, and or proprioception. Uh, some docs do this, some docs don't. Um, but, you know, some of the stuff that you do can fall under that, uh, whether if you're doing some things for BOSU ball to get their balance back, uh, especially uh, some of your patients that are a little bit older, or maybe they have uh, a neurological that you're working with, uh, the therapeutic activities, so the dynamic activities to, to improve uh, functional performance. So these are going to be your bigger um, bigger movements. Maybe you're using kettlebells in the office, things like that. Again, so it's a dynamic activity. And so, you know, just like when we know there's dynamic stretching and, and static stretching, there's dynamic activities. So, you know, when your athletes are coming in and you're trying to improve their function, they're, you're trying to get them better, you're working on, say, their pitching motion, or you're work, working on uh, their kick for soccer, uh, you can do dynamic activities to, to improve them and get the bill for those. Manual therapy techniques, these are important for multiple reasons. Um, 97140 can't be done in the same region we adjust. So it makes it really hard on your billing if you're trying to bill a 97140 on the same day you're, you're billing for an adjustment. But say a patient comes in, you verify their benefits, and uh, they have really limited chiropractic coverage, but their PT coverage is wide open. Um, maybe you want to bill for those adjustments, but when those adjustments run out, you can uh, roll over to the 97140s, do a manual therapy technique, because you can still mobilize that SI joint, um, continue to work the soft tissue in that area, uh, and that still counts as a 97140. So maybe you run out on the 98940s, the 98941s, but you can then transition to the 97140s. Or maybe they have no chiropractic coverage and you're just billing the PT codes. Um, 97535, so the therapeutic activities. So again, this is dynamic activities along the lines uh, of uh, the 97530. So um, anything that's gonna help patients with their ADLs, um, so transitioning like on and off the toilet. So teaching them like uh, how to do a sit stand properly, uh, how to lift properly. So all those things are gonna fall into this category. And then the 9715, uh, 97150 group therapy. So if you're working with multiple people at a time, um, if there's you and a CA and uh, you're kind of overseeing both, you can still build an, uh, say a 97110 for therapeutic uh, activities. But uh, or uh, exercise, but when you're in the group therapy, that's if you have, you've got a lot of people in your office, you have a lot of people doing the same stuff, um, you can build a group therapy. So some docs like to do like a back school uh, program for people with chronic low back pain. Um, the group therapy is gonna pay a little bit less, but um, if, for what you're doing and uh, being kosher billing wise, that sometimes is the best off. So implementation, how do you get started bringing it in, in your office? Um, Obviously, it starts with your exam and, and patient necessity. So what did you find? So did you find that they have, you know, uh, weak hip flexors, short and tight hip flexors, short hamstrings, did they have forward head posture? Um, so the things that we want to be able to address, uh, to correct, and, and then putting together a rehab program uh, that addresses whatever the condition is. So making sure you diagnose properly. Um, if you have low-level diagnosis, if all you bill is like our um, diagnosis, you know, M50, uh, 4.2, you're putting like cervical pain and um, turn around and put an M99.01. It's kind of hard to uh, substantiate doing uh, a lot of rehab for a uh, cervical spine when, when you're, uh, you have low level diagnosis. So it has to be a little bit higher level diagnosis. Um, so, you know, whether you're showing that there's uh, disc degeneration, uh, you're showing that there's spinal degeneration, that there's radiculopathy, things like that. Um, so in our office, we use a tracking sheet. We put those in the file when we build the file. It has all the exercises broken down by all the regions. And we want to see patients be able to progress. So we have about six uh, levels or phases of um, exercises to be able to progress people through. 
So as we see them, you know, come in, they're gonna do level one exercises. They get started with those and that's a good place to start. We're monitoring them as their strength improves, the range of motion improves, uh, we're seeing improvement in their function and decrease in pain, then okay, maybe you're ready for level two. So they're cruising along, you go from level two, try to go to level three, well, it's a little too much too fast. Okay, we're gonna slide back to the level two, but we've got a chart that we can go through that has everything on there and it goes through day by day. And so we can go along, I think we get about 20, 20 visits on a sheet. Um, we were able to track all the time sets and reps of all the exercises that they're uh, doing. Uh, and then just making sure that when you do that stuff, that it correlates back to your treatment plan and your rehab plan for goals and complicated factors. You, you have to, if you're gonna bill it, you have to have your goals listed. Um, uh, otherwise the insurance company, if they come back, they wanna audit you and you haven't listed any goals and you're not reaching any goals and you're not able to track and uh, show, show any progress, um, it's not gonna go well. So the rehab grocery list, what kind of stuff can you have in your office? Again, a lot of this is low tech rehab, but um, it's very effective and it's gonna get patients better. Um, we have digital timers at uh, all the stations that we have on the floor. We have mats on the floor. Uh, so similar to like a yoga mat, they're a little bit thicker than a yoga mat, but that way everybody's got their spot on their uh, the floor if they're doing four exercises. And so it's a defined space that they stay on. Um, we probably have about seven or eight physio balls in, on the, uh, in the office. We have uh, like small, medium, large, uh, basically depending on the size of the patient. Um, it's their height that kind of determines which size ball they should be using. Uh, we have TheraBands. So we have the bulk, the box where they, we can cut them to desired length. We have the ones with handles that we can put on uh, something to strap on to be able to uh, isolate and uh, say if they want to do a curl or if they're doing rows or whatever it is. And then the larger loop resistance bands, which are basically like a large rubber band. Uh, so if we have people doing exercises, like maybe they're doing sidestep exercises, uh, trying to increase hip strength. Uh, we do the stretch straps. So where, you know, if they're using like a hamstring stretch, they're able to put it over the end of their foot. There's multiple loops that they can put their hands in. Um, basically, depending on how flexible they are, they can put their hand up the strap to be able to, uh, to get a better stretch and pull more bit muscle with their arms. We do a lot of foam rolling. And there's different types of foam rollers. You have um, just the straight foam rollers um, that are uh, solid foam. You have some that are where it's the, uh, more of a cushion around the PVC pipe and then some that look more like a tractor tire. So same as your exercises, patients are able to progress to those. And then we also have them in short and long depending on what they're uh, gonna be using it for. So we may have a patient that's lying back and um, they're on it supine from head to toe and they're running it down their spine. Uh, they've got their arms going in external rotation essentially. And so they're doing a pec stretch and they're doing, doing that for a couple of minutes at a time. Um, they go ahead and they put it uh, horizontally across their spine, basically rolling from about T10 up and they're rolling uh, through the T-spot. Um, you know, we work with a lot of athletes. So rolling the IT bands, rolling vastus lateralis. Um, so the foam rollers are, are really crucial to what we do. Uh, weighted bars. So it basically it's about a, two and a half foot bar, uh, plastic on the outside, but weighted on the inside, we have varying weights. And so we use those say for like shoulder rehab, maybe they're on the foam roll and they're taking that and they're doing um, uh, bilateral shoulder flexion. And so being able to go back over their head using that weighted bar. So the, the stronger or uh, healthy shoulder is gonna assist the other shoulder through the flexion. Cervical blocks or dinner rolls. Um, so dinner rolls, the uh, the name brand, but you can buy kind of the generic cervical blocks when you're trying to do uh, um, cervical curve correction. And then BOSU balls. Um, so again, working on balance and then the BOSU ball will flip and uh, being able to use it again as like the wobble. So again, wobble boards, uh, again, we're doing rehab with um, ankles, knees. So being able to take patients where they're going back and forth and side to side the wooden pole or rod. So again, kind of like the shoulder rehab, we can take a patient and uh, have them basically using their, their good arm or shoulder to uh, force the, the injured side that we're trying to correct and deflection, abduction, external rotation. Um, medicine balls, everybody knows what a medicine ball is. So basically something the size of a basketball that's weighted. Trigger point balls. So we'll have patients um, sitting on their mat. They've got the trigger point ball. Maybe they put it under their into their hamstring or into their calves, they're rolling through those. 
Uh, they may put it in the quad roll or they uh, may put it somewhere like around uh, levator scap insertion and they're rolling their upper back. Uh, we have the pre-core stretching unit. Uh, so patients, again, they can uh, be seated and they can go through the stretches without having to lie down. Uh, dumbbells and dumbbells are useful for a lot of stuff. And most of us think, you know, uh, arms, shoulders, but you can also have a patient on the floor basically doing kind of like a, a uh, a dog position, you know, on all fours, uh, and then turn around and they can put the dumbbell in the back of the knee doing hip extension. Um, the core balls, which again, it's about the size of a volleyball, uh, kind of a squishy ball, almost like what you'd imagine your little kids playing with, but uh, we use that for uh, pelvic tilts with adduction, but also tucking it under the pelvis as you have patients doing uh, hip flexion. And then stroop straps, uh, so it's a, basically a handle on either end. It's got a uh, cord that runs through a, uh, a foam liner. And so patients can put that around the back of the neck. They pull on the straps, pull down, and then they do cervical uh, extension and distraction, being able to strengthen the C-spine and again, help with uh, curve, um, if they have a curve reversal or loss of the cervical curve, so the strength would be restored at curve. Uh, and then we also do like the petty bond traction. So the cervical traction over the door, you can run, um, where it's got the pegs on the wall uh, to be able to adjust the height for it. So again, nothing super expensive. I, the most expensive thing on there probably is the pre-core stretching unit. But outside of that, most of the stuff is you know um, $20 or less. So why would you want to start offering the physical therapy? Uh, uh, it's low tech rehab and it's reproducible by your patients. So you can go and give a prescription to your patient and to have them reproduce it, they're going to get better faster. You're able to bill for giving them a home care exercise. Um, we use WebEx, so we'll send them that prescription uh, via email. They're able to um, basically download an app. They can check in. They can check that they've done all their stretches and exercises. They can uh, make notes. So if they thought an exercise was difficult, if it was painful, if it was too easy, um, but uh, WebEx is an easy way with pictures and videos to send people a, a prescription for what you want to be doing at home. Um, if patients are involved in their care, so again, active care patients, uh, you're going to get better patient retention. And, uh, you're going to decrease the recovery times. Um, going through school, you know, you, you really don't learn a lot about the C uh, CPT codes and maximizing reimbursement. They don't teach us that. That's stuff that either you have a mentor that um, teaches you, you're an associate, you learn from the practice that you're in. Uh, but there's somebody along the line typically that's teaching you that once you're, you're out of school, you learn at a seminar. Um, but it's, it's a way to reimburse uh, for your services because a lot of docs are we're doing this stuff and they're just showing their patients they don't even realize that they can bill for it. Um, so being able to re uh, increase your reimbursement and not having to um, increase the patient volume to get a reimbursement. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Layton, for that meeting. Um, so I do have a question. Uh, when it comes to like your physical therapy setup, I'm, you mentioned a lot of different, um, different uh, resources that they can use in terms of like actually helping the patient get better. Um, but do you, in terms of like setting it up, do you have that integrated into like your chiropractic rooms? Do you have a completely separate room for physical therapy? How do you set that uh, physical therapy stuff in your practice? So we do more of the open, uh, open format. So our physical therapy area runs basically right into our adjusting area. We have two kind of like shelving units. Some doctors use half walls. Uh, they divide the adjusting tables um, uh, physical uh, therapy area. So it kind of creates a little bit of divider, uh, a little bit of space, a little bit of privacy. Um, but I can see from where I'm adjusting because the tables are head in and there's a desk with a computer in between. So I, it makes it easy to get some notes. Um, but all the spots on the floor then are available and I can see all those. Um, so we have about eight spots on the floor I can see all eight of those at one time. That doesn't include the, the uh, therapy tables that we have people doing rehab on. So some of our elderly people, we just know they can't get on the floor. So we have um, three separate tables that they're able to um, lie on, say if they're doing their hamstring stretch, pelvic tilts, whatever it is. That they're doing. Gotcha. But it's, gotcha. it's all open format so we can see everything. So 
Mm -hmm. And is this all in like one room? Uh, it is. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, yeah. okay. Go ahead. Oh, okay, and then I do have one more question. Um, so it was just more like a question of curiosity when the way that I imagine it, I'm pretty sure you can either offer physical therapy when you're going through the day two process and basically getting the patient on some kind of treatment plan for chiropractic care. But do you typically push out that combination of physical therapy in the beginning, meaning like on that day two process? Or is this something that you incorporate throughout their treatment plan and then you suggest later on the line? Um, it's, we address that in the day two and, okay. and my, if it's a patient, that's a referral, they already know that's what we do in our practice for those because gotcha. we do that with such a large percentage of our patients. Um, but in that day two, when I'm, you know, walking, walking through my day two and I give them their options, you know, you can come in and just do chiropractic care, just get adjusted, uh, come and go as you please. So doing like, uh, just their own like relief care, call me up when your back hurts. Um, and I, you know, I'll tell them, we'll always get you in. And then option number two, come in, you're going to do uh, chiropractic care and we're going to uh, coordinate that with the physical therapist. So doing all the rehab. So we're doing corrective care. And so when we explain corrective care and explain that it uh, involves them being committed to doing some stretches and exercises, uh, as they get better, as they progress, we'll, we'll see them less. Um, so it's laid out in the day to giving them the option. Um, and, but we, we give them the lay of the land so they understand what that's going to look like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you so much, um, for your presentation today. And, um, I appreciate you answering my questions. Doc. Thanks. Have a great rest of the day. Of course. You too. Take care.